welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we're going to be working on my own. This one here tricked me. I expected a normal common failure, so I bought a part. I fired, well, I didn't actually fire, I loaded the parts cannon. With every one of these Toyotas in existence, what does that usually mean? And to me, that usually means there's a bad wheel speed sensor or a bad bearing. Now, one of the things that I've learned over the years with these Toyotas is that 90% of the time when something like this happens, it's usually rust that builds up inside the rear wheel bearing. And that rust fragments and it chews up the inside of the thing and it takes out the speed sensor and it just destroys the whole thing. So I went online and I ordered a new wheel bearing and then when I went to put the wheel bearing in I decided to do a couple of quick checks and I found out that I was wrong. Now first thing we're going to do is a system scan on this thing and see what's going on. That is correct. There we go. Full health report. And the fault report is completed. We're going to hit fault report. Scroll through here, see what we got. And ABS, which is what we're after. The 741's catalytic converter, uh, torque converter, lockup failure, and the P0420 we all know is a catalytic converter failure. So, yeah, my poor little 225,000 mile jalopy is starting to get old and have problems. Now let's see if we can figure out in the ABS what that C0210 is all about. Okay, we're going to go into the ABS and anti-lock. We're going to read data stream. We're going to pick wheel speed sensors. all four of those and now we're gonna roll forward a little bit see what's going on here we got okay we got a couple of lazy sensors from the looks of things but uh, we've got nothing at all coming out of the right rear and we're gonna do a quick U-turn here. We're going to uh, combine all of these. And we're going to bring them up on the graph here. And then uh, see maybe if anything is dropping out. As you can see, that purple line for the right rear wheel is flat all the way across the bottom, so we've got nothing. Let's get out and start doing some checks. Now on the left rear wheel, over here. So 
we've got signal on the left rear wheel. We'll back out and go to miles per hour here. See if I can get you an angle here where there isn't so much glare. All right, now we're going to go to the other side of the car. Spin this wheel and nothing. Nothing at all is happening. So let's start troubleshooting this wheel bearing. So at the moment I've got the wires back here back probed. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this one-handed here. We're going to uh Hold those right there. And now we're gonna spin the wheel. Ooh, we have voltage. We have AC voltage being created by the rotation of the wheel, which means that that bearing is probably actually okay. You know, I apologize, I cannot make this visible no matter what I do. The glare is just absolutely incredible. Now we're gonna go guided component test. We're gonna go into ABS. ABS with EBD, whatever the world that is, I don't know, wheel speed sensors, rear wheel speed sensor, uh, what do we want, we want signature test, view meter, so what's nice about the snap on is that it will set itself up. initiated now I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my probes and let's see we have signal not doing what I want it to do but let's see 10 milliseconds. We change that. Set up. Trigger view. Traces sweep. We want 20 milliseconds. Want a different voltage traces trace one we're on 10 volt let's bring this down to five okay AC coupling and back Now let's see what happens. Alright. Now we have a sine wave. So we have a good bearing and we don't have any dropouts either from the looks of things. I went back and reset the scale for uh, one second. I get nice even constant movement here. Hope you guys can see some of this here. We do not have any dropouts. See that nice and smooth. There are no dropouts. So our wheel bearing is actually good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna read the fault code. Double check things here. Okay. C0210 rear speed sensor right hand circuit current. Um, I'm going to short that circuit. Say clear first, see what, what it'll do. Probably won't clear because it's an open circuit. Nope, did not clear. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this 
jumper right here and we're going to short these two together and we're going to clear clear fault completed and it's still reading the exact same code so we definitely have a break in the line somewhere otherwise this thing would be showing short to ground so I'm going to go up inside the vehicle here and we're going to trace that wiring up through and we're going to find the other end of it pull up the trim signal at the wheel we didn't get but when we go to the other end of the connector inside the car we're getting this right here what this is telling me is that the system is checking to make sure that the sensor is actually there so what we're going to do now is we're going to clear again clear fault completed right speed sensor right hand circuit still there current what we're going to do now is we're going to short this together and we're going to come back over here now again and we're going to clear right hand circuit still there hmm what am I doing wrong this time? Did I knock one of the probes out? Probably. Okay, clear again. and key off and then back on Your fault is still there yes Why is it still there? Didn't work. Did, didn't do that the last time I checked this. Chassis. Read data stream. Right rear wheel. Right speed sensor open normal. Doesn't exactly sound like I've got a created short here, does it? trouble codes no 
no trouble codes. Right now, both of these are shorted together. So let's go to data stream and we'll look at the rear open and rear speed again. Normal, zero. Now we're going to unplug the short right here. Maybe. And we have open detected. So we have confirmed wiring integrity to the connector behind the seat back here as being good. We are now open. And if we go back over here now and we create the short. normal. So we've confirmed wiring integrity to the back of the seat so this wire right here is the one that's compromised and from the way it's drawn tight I wouldn't be surprised if it's right in here. Now well, while doing all the poking around I figured out what was going on. I was checking the wiring and I got all the way up in here and this connector right here that black wire was broken off inside the connector due to corrosion. Let's see if I can get this out. It's a little tight. I'm gonna get this unplugged and then I'll grab you guys again. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this wire out. Pull my back probes back out of here. And then uh, we'll go and snake the new wiring in here. See if I can figure out where I put it. Oh, there it is, right on the passenger seat. China. Hopefully it works. And we're gonna get that installed. Push this out from the inside, I think. Maybe. No. Not easy to push through. There we go. And it's born. Now let's get that one unplugged inside and pull that out. Silly little plug on the inside undone. I'll pull that through. Snake all of this out of here. Oh, I gotta get that undone right there yet. Probably should get a pair of needle nose pliers on that. Get up underneath here on the bottom, squeeze the tabs on the bottom. And out it comes. And then we'll unplug this part here. Squeeze again. Just little ears, little tabs, and squeeze them in. And then rock your wire loose. And then get it unplugged from the wheel. A little jeweler screwdriver, tiny screwdriver, push down on the tab on the inside. And you can rock the connector off. Push it back with the screwdriver while you're trying to rock it. That way there you gotta better chance of getting this thing to come off.
There we go. Get this wire completely removed and out of here. And I'll take the new one. in through the hole and we'll get this snaked up underneath here and it comes back down through underneath here up through underneath the brake line the brake line. Alright. That piece goes up there. This piece goes down here. Get this one situated. Hmm. Apparently that bolt goes there and this bolt goes there. Get these mixed up. How or why they're the same same thing? All right, right hand man. That's got to go there. Snap that down into the axle. And this piece in here locked in. Get the plug back in the back side of the wheel bearing. See you guys, I don't know if you can see anything here. But, uh, this is the wheel bearing right here. Oh, wow, this is terrible. Yeah, you guys can't really see anything here, but there's the plug. We got that in. There's the wiring running up through. Gotta get this back in here right there and just screw into it all right and then on the inside we gotta get that little plug right there plugged into right here click and down into its little holder right there click and then we'll sneak the rubber piece up in. Or through. now everything on the inside looks good yep yeah we're good all the way around there and let's get uh, the probe hooked back up to it and make sure that we actually have a signal and we're all hooked back up again so we've got uh, our back probe right there because it's easier than trying to do it into this connector right here. So we've got our signal. And we're going to rotate the wheel now. I'm just going to do this. And look at that. We have... We have signal. So now we can put the wheel back on and take it for a road test. So at least now, when we uh, spin the wheel, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, we have uh, a 
It's spinning with no problem. So let's get this wheel on and take it for a road test. Apparently all it took was turning the car off, turning the car back on, and now they are gone. And we are going down the road, clear fault code should be gone now. Clear fault completed. Communicating, no trouble codes. Finally, yay, we have a win. So, you guys thought that one was interesting or felt that in any way, shape, or form it was helpful, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for upcoming videos. And most importantly, don't forget, you've got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. Use a catalytic converter. Uh, part doesn't seem to want to work. So refault code code here. All right, let's back up again. Clear fault. Still not clearing. Let's back out of this. Uh, clear fault memory. Fault memory complete now. Read fault code. Right hand circuit still there. Hmm. What am I doing wrong this time? 